Hello, welcome back to another edition of the IU Film Room. Uh, this is Tony Adrania at Coach Adrania on Twitter. Um, diving into the IU Troy game on Saturday evening. Uh, saw a lot of really positive things from the Hoosiers. Thought it was their best overall game they've played thus far in the 2019-20 campaign. Um, just from an overall offensive execution, defensive execution, um, baseline out of bounds, zone offense. Really the first extensive look of IU zone offense that we've seen. I uh, saw some really positive results. I uh, really liked what Archie did against the zone, and we'll dive into that. Uh, also going extensive look into the baseline out of bounds plays IU ran, uh, some defensive things that I still think need shored up, and just uh, a lot of different actions that, that IU ran against this Troy team. Uh, so as always, appreciate you following along. And without further ado, we'll dive into these first clips. In these IU film room sessions, we've talked extensively about IU's baseline out of bounds execution. Um, we've shown you this play over and over. IU has ran it every single game. It's a simple starts four low, um, and it's going to turn into a flex action. IU runs it one minute into the game. Joey Brunk pops out. He swings it. Great screen from Al Durham to free up Trace Jackson Davis. At this point, if this guy's not switching on a Trace Jackson Davis, it's an easy bucket. He doesn't. Trace gets it, gets a turnover, his favorable shoulder, easy left-hand layup. So here we are again. We're about a minute into the second half. IU has a baseline out-of-bounds play. So what do they go to? Uh, Their old faithful flex baseline out-of-bounds play. You've got Trace Jackson Davis in this exact same spot. So what does Troy think's happening? They're thinking Al Durham's going to set this screen. Trace is going to pop open. So Al Durham's guy is really thinking, all right, I got to help on this a lot more than I did. So what happens, he helps right here. You see that he's helping on Trace. Trace really isn't open, but what's happening now? It's a flex action. So Trace is coming off this back screen, but guess what? Joey Brunk is now setting a down screen for Al Durham. And with that said, Al does a really nice job of reading the screen. This guy tries to go underneath and over the top. So what does Al do? He flares it a little bit. Great screen from Joey Brunk. Al pops, a lot of space, one of the best shooters on the team. Easy two points, or three points, excuse me. All right, so then about three minutes later, IU's got another base on out of bounds. They've ran their their flex action a couple times now uh, with success. So IU puts Trace in this exact same spot. He started here in this corner. So Troy probably has a good idea. They think, all right, they're going to run this flex action. They're going to try to get Trace Jackson Davis on the block. Otherwise, um, they're going to set a down screen here, and somebody's going to pop out for three. Well, Archie has ran this play at his entire IU tenure. I think this is the first time we've seen it this season. But ultimately what it's going to be is Trace gets the ball on the elbow. It's going to be a clear out action for him going to his left hand, his strong hand with a ton of space. And I just really love this action because it's simple. Look at this. Trace Jackson Davis has a ball with a smaller defender on him. Everybody's clearing out. He's got 15 feet that he's got to get to the rim. He's got He's going to have a ton of space, no help side. If this guy helps... It's an easy three-point shot for uh, Franklin. Ultimately, doesn't help. Trace Jackson Davis is just over to overpower two points. So those are IU's baseline out-of-bounds actions. Again, it, it's not rocket science. It's nothing that's super extensive for Archie, but they're simple actions. They're executed well, good screens, good passes, guys in the right spots, and ultimately uh, ends up in, I think, what, seven points for IU just on simple out-of-bounds plays. Looking at the defensive side of the ball, um, I haven't been as hard on IU's defense as some people have been, including Archie Miller, um, because I think teams in the last few games have hit some really tough shots. Uh, I didn't think Troy hit that many. But with that said, I think the biggest concern for IU's defense is their ball screen defense. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. So the way IU guards these ball screens is um, Demise Anderson has to make his guy use this screen. There's no rejection. Trace is flaring out. Um, or hedging, excuse me, um, to force this ball handler to go out towards a half court line. They're not trying to let him turn that corner and create. Where Armand Franklin is, is what's called the tag guy, and he's supposed to be taking away the roller until Trace can recover. Now, as we see in this play here, this guy rolls out. Now, Armand Franklin is in a tough spot because Trace hedged out like he's supposed to. Demise has to have active hands to try to not let this pass get through. But now Armand Franklin, he's in a tough spot because he's got a guard too. He's got his man in the corner here. That's a shooter. 
and he's got Trace's guy here. So he's trying to play two. He's a little late on the tag. So he's kind of trying to hedge at this guy, um, kind of unsure what he wants to do. Trace kind of jogs back. He's unsure if, if Franklin's taking his guy and Trace needs to go to the corner. Franklin hedges out. So really, this is just kind of a hodgepodge, um, miscommunication. Guys don't really know where they're supposed to be or they're unsure of what they're supposed to do. And ultimately what happens is Franklin leaves the ball. The ball is most important. Everybody knows that when um, coaching, you, you tell guys, whoever's got the ball is the most important guy on the floor. Um, so Franklin leaves the ball. Trace doesn't really know if he needs to go guard this guy or the guy on the ball. What it really ends up being is a wide open three pointer and Troy knocks it down. I said though, I think at the end of the day, I, you did a really fine job on the defensive end. Um, and this play is something that it's really subtle. Um, but I really liked to see, uh, and it was with Devonte green and race Thompson, this play, uh, it ended up being a shot clock or Troy shooting the ball like 30 feet out. Cause it was turning into a shot clock violation. But what I see here is Devontae Green A moves his feet really well on the ball. Something IU struggled with a little bit is on the ball defense. Then his guy sets a screen. So let's go back here. Devontae's guy sets er, a screen here for race. Devontae just switches onto him. He's like, look, if I don't switch onto this guy, he's going to have a wide open lane to the basket. So what does he do? He switches onto a little bit bigger guy. Race Thompson denies his guy from getting the ball. So what happens here? Troy's starting to reset. There's 10 seconds left in the shot clock. Now look at Race Thompson. He's guarding a guard. Devontae Green's guarding a big. They're trying to figure out what to do here. So what do they do? They communicate. They're off the ball. Troy's trying to set something up, and they switch back to their guys. Now that, that might seem elementary. That might seem subtle. But that's that's big because it shows AI use communicating on the defensive end. They recognize that there was a mismatch. They recognized the right time to switch back. They weren't switching back in a scramble situation where nobody knew what to do. And like I said, this ended up being uh, Troy shooting a terrible shot because the shot clock was going down. So there's little subtle things like that that I've been watching for for IU. Um, again, it, it's not a huge thing. It's not like um, a play that they're going to get three points out of or anything like that. But again, it just shows me the, the basketball IQ and the smarts of IU, and it led to a tough shot from Troy. While well, we're talking subtleties and – just high basketball IQ plays and all kinds of things like that for the Hoosiers. I want to show another subtlety from Armand Franklin here uh, that I really liked to see. So Armand passes last year, guys passed. They stood a lot. Um, it was a lot of throwing the ball to Langford and just seeing what he could do with it. Um, this is a completely different Hoosiers offense and, and it's a more efficient and B I like to watch it better. Um, but as we see here, so Armand Franklin's at the top, he passes away, he moves, so now, as we see here, it's really subtle, but look what Franklin does. He doesn't just stand. He doesn't just go to a spot and try to, you know, watch somebody create. He goes and sets a down screen here for Devontae Green's guy. So now what that creates is a late switch. So uh, Armand's man switches on to Devontae. Well, this, as we know as Hoosiers fans, is too much room for Devontae Green. Devontae Green catches. He fires, knocks down a shot. So just to watch that again in fast time, we see Armand Franklin – He's headhunting. He's looking for somebody he can screen. He does it. Late switch. Devontae Green catches, fires, three points. As I mentioned at the top here, IU saw their first look against uh, extensive zone defense. And I really like what Archie does against the zone because, A, um, he overloads a side, which is what you have to do to create mismatches and throw the zone out of whack. He screens the zone, which is really what I want to look at here. Um, in these three different actions. So the way this play starts is I use got a big on top. And what that big does is he swings the ball. And now as we stop it here, the side is overloaded. So one, two, three, four guys on the ball side. Um, what IU is trying to mask here, they're trying to make it look like they're going to reverse this ball to the opposite side and move. But really what they're doing is it's going to be a dribble handoff here. And you see trace here, trace is setting up to screen this guy here in the zone which would be Al Durham coming off that screen. So let's look at it. He screens this guy here. Now that creates decisions on Troy's part. So this guy right here, he's got to decide if he's going to pick up the ball, if he's going to stay on Justin Smith. This guy here has got to decide, am I going to guard race or am I going to try to get guard Trace Jackson Davis here after this screen? Um, this guy, he's kind of getting taken out of the play for a minute by the screen. So there's a lot of different options that IU has here. 
So ultimately what happens is this guy kind of takes the ball. So Justin Smith's here. Ray Thompson's wide open because this guy is more focused on Trace Jackson Davis because he's having a good game. So what that leaves is Ray Thompson wide open, maybe from six feet from the basket. He catches. He goes up. He gets fouled two shots. So we see it again. Still in the first half, Race is going to swing this ball over here. He's going down low. We see Trace Jackson Davis is now ball screen here. Al's coming off this to his strong hand. Demezi's in the corner. So what happens? Trace sets this screen. This guy now decides, okay, I'm going to take Race Thompson. This guy decides he's going to take the ball because this guy's being screened. What does that leave? It leaves Demezi Anderson, who is hot in the corner, three points. So IU's got the ball. They're being zoned yet again here. Eight and a half seconds left in the half. They go to their trusty zone play here. All right, so now it's Deron Davis setting this ball screen. It's green coming off this screen here. So Troy, again, has decisions to make. This guy in this corner has made a shot now. Where Trace Jackson Davis is, he's scored. Uh, it was race that was down here in this corner. So now Troy is thinking, all right, what do we got to do here? So what do they do? This guy just stunts at green. This guy wants to stay on Trace. This guy is worried about Armand Franklin. And what happens is they leave the ball wide open. So it's uncontested, 15-footer for green, two points. So that's the exact same action, ran three different times within a seven- or eight-minute span, three different options off the same exact action, and IU scored on all of them. Really like what I saw from IU's zone offense. Sticking with the zone offense theme here, um, Another thing that IU did really well against his own offense was if the middle of the floor was open, they hit it. Guys that caught it in the middle made good decisions. Again, uh, just really liked what I saw here. So Demise Anderson, he sees the middle of the floor is open. He hits Deron Davis. So we pause it. Three guys collapse on Deron. This guy is going to stay with Trace Jackson Davis. He's having a really good game. Deron keeps the ball high. He's active. Justin Smith sees that his guy has turned his head, so there's no way he knows where Justin Smith is at. What does that turn into? A nice cut from Justin Smith. Two points, good uh, pass from Deron Davis. Again, IU sees the middle of the floor open. Al Durham sees Joey Brunk right here, 15 feet from the basket. And something that a lot of people might not realize is that Joey Brunk is actually a pretty good shooter. Um, you know, he, he's unorthodox a little bit that he's 6'11", uh, but he can fire it. Uh, I had the privilege of of seeing Joey when play since he was in seventh grade at Southport Middle School, being a Southport coach myself. Um, and really what people might not realize is that when he was a middle schooler, he was the best shooter on the middle school team. Uh, his coach would run plays for him to make three pointers and, and things like that. So while that not might be his game right now, uh, he can't shoot it a little bit and he shows that, and that'll really help stretch defenses out if he can knock down this 15 footer with consistency. But again, really liked what IU did against the zone defense. Um, pretty much whenever they saw zone, they knew exactly what to do against it, um, and score. Just a couple clips ago, I showed you Deron Davis making a really nice pass out of the uh, middle of the floor to find a cutter. This is something that is starting to become a theme with the IU's bigs, is they are really, really good passers. They're unselfish, uh, which is really going to pay dividends come Big Ten season. But as we see here, Race Thompson catches the ball here. It's an immediate double team. That's Troy's defensive motto would be my guess, um, is doubling the post. I don't really agree with it. I think, you know, this guy could probably play race straight up and do a decent job because what this does is creates mismatches and it creates open opportunities for IU. Basically, Ray uh, race, this is pick your poison for Troy because he's going to have Trace Jackson Davis cutting down the lane with a, a guard trying to stop him, um, which as we're going to see, uh, that guy is not capable of that. But this guy coming over to try to stop Trace Jackson Davis is also leaving Devonte Green wide open in the corner. Um, for double teams. I think race probably saw that, but you've got trace Jackson Davis cutting down the middle of the floor. Not a lot of guys going to stop that freight train. As we see it, he catches it. He puts it up with the left and one, but there was multiple opportunities for race there. He didn't force any actions. He saw the cutter coming. He saw the double team. Nice pass. Two points for the Hoosiers. That's the action. I want to dissect a little bit here for the Hoosiers. And this is their diamond action. We've seen them run this extensively the last three games. Um, they've run this and it's a very simple action where the guy in the bottom can choose either way he wants to go off a down screen, whatever way he chooses, the guy at the top is going to flare opposite. All right. So in this action here, we got Armand Franklin making his decision. He comes off the screen. All right. That seems fairly simple. 
So now what I want to focus on here is he's going to go right back down here and he's going to be able to pick which way he wants to go again. So this is actually where this play becomes really effective because this guy now has to get hit by a screen again coming as Armand comes back down, and then he's got to hit, get hit by another one. Whether or not he comes this way or this way, that guy's getting hit by another, two more screens. So what we see in this particular action is, he, is Deron Davis sets a screen as Armand's going down. Then Armand comes back up. Deron sets a great screen. Armand does a great job of reading this screen. Now he's open. All right, He flares the screen because his guy tries to go over the top. He's open. Devontae Green hits him. Now they're in scramble situation. Great ball movement from IU and one for Race Thompson. So that's all we've got for this edition of the IU Film Room. As I said, probably Indiana's most complete game uh, of the season from an offensive and defensive standpoint. Um, as I say, after each one of these, I appreciate everybody's feedback. Uh, you know, always open to different things you might want to see in these film rooms, but uh, ultimately what I want to do is just kind of give a, a coaching perspective and dive a little bit deeper into this Hoosiers team after each game. So as always, appreciate you watching. Uh, give me a follow on Twitter at Coach Adrania. Uh, Till next time. Thanks.